Hi everyone, this is Chetan Nayak. This video is a quick demonstration of some of the new capabilities for Brutal v1.5. So over here, we have our payload connected, which is currently in sleep zero. Uh, however, there are a few changes in this current payload. If we right click the listener and take a look at the uh, configuration, we can see that we have enabled module stomping. So now most of you might be thinking that module stomping is pretty generic and it has been there since Cobalt Strike, I think 3.6 or 3.7, I believe. But this module stomping is pretty different that is currently present in Brutotel and that's what we'll be taking a look at along with a new injection technique as well. So over here, we have a payload in sleep zero, which should currently reside within chakra.dll. So I'll go here, search for badger and i'll do a refresh if i scroll down we can see we have a chakra.dll which is of 196 kilobytes i quickly open chakra.dll and you can see however that the raw size of the text section is pretty different it's 5632000 in hex which should come around 5.5 megabytes of size however this is different because we have stormed this specific dll that is why so whenever our payload is in sleep zero mode, in this case, we will end up having our RX regions exposed. However, things become pretty different when we change the sleep interval. So if I put this to sleep 10, and if I do a refresh, we can see instantly that the size of the RX region has changed. If I open this up, let's see how our RX region looks like. And you can see, that this is exactly the same RX region that is present within the original chakra.dll. You can see the whole text regions over here. So in this case, what Brutal currently does is that the moment the payload is not in sleep zero state, uh, without module stomping, it would usually encrypt the RX region and convert into an RW region and store it elsewhere. However, in this case, when you have enabled module stomping, it will directly erase all different or I would say all types of possibilities that would be there for the RX region detection because it extracts the RX region, puts them inside a heap, encrypts it and on the second hand it also restores the original chakra.dll's RX region that we see over here. So if we go back and uh, I'll close this section because the section size would obviously change when we go back to our original sleep. If I put this to let's say sleep zero back again, we'll have to wait a few more seconds till it goes back to sleep zero mode. And if I go and do a refresh, we can see we have our chakra.dll, which is different because it contains our actual payload in this case, which means the RX region, whenever it is not sleeping, it will be the original payload of Brutal. However, when the payload is sleeping, it will restore the original uh, information or the data of the chakra.dll. However, this is just one of the techniques as to how your cobalt strike or other C2 payloads get caught. Th there's actually a bit more that goes over here, which is something that I would like to explain with the help of this blog. So this is a great blog where uh, the author of this blog specified that cobalt strike uses load library X explicitly to load a DLL and it simply storms the module which is pretty much understandable because if you directly call load library a there's a high chance that the dll main of the load library a will be called and you don't really know where the instruction pointer would be in the loaded dll so if you directly try to override the sections of a loaded dll it would most likely end up crashing that's why copal strike uses load library x a or x w but however if we go to the load library x uh, information this is the flag that Cobalt Strike uses. So now when you enable this flag in the load library X or load library W, it loads the image not as a DLL, but as an EXE in this case, because of which it will not resolve the IAT. It will not call the DLL main of the DLL that we will be loading over here via load library XW. And a lot of things will be different which would end up reflecting in the process environment blog as has been explained over here in this uh, blog in this case. But let's see how we would be able to evade this as well. So I have a very small piece of code which does nothing fancy. It loads ADVAPI32 and chakra.dll. 
it uh, simply checks the process ID over here in this case of the current process and prints the pointer or basically the handle of our loaded DLL base address. If I compile this and I'll go back, I'll just type LLX, I'll hit enter. Let's see if the detect cobalt stomp is able to detect it. Uh, we will be required to provide a PID which is 8416 in this case. And you can see that it has found the traces of cobalt strike module stomping because we simply loaded a DLL with load library X. If we simply remove this portion, then it won't detect anything. So which means that this is a pretty crucial, uh, I would say, uh, part of whenever you're doing any kind of DLL stomping. However, let's go back. Let me inject my Brutrotels payload that we have. So I'll just put it to sleep one again. And I'll just type, let's say, uh, suspended run notepad.exe. And instead of just uh, doing the default process injection, I'll type set underscore thread X. We have a new process injection technique via remote procedure call. So I'll type set thread X 12. And I'll type sh inject X, the PID of my notepad, which I actually cleaned. So let me just search for notepad. Provided there aren't multiple. Okay. So 7688 slash home documents badger underscore. Perfect. So let's see if we get our connection back from notepad.exe. Perfect. I'll exit this. So let's go back over here and scan our notepad.exe. I'll put this into sleep, let's say 10. You can see the PID is 7688. Let's scan 7688. And you can see that it specifies that no traces of cobalt strike module stomping was found. However, if we go to notepad.exe, Refresh and we'll slide down. You can see we have a chakra.dll restored as it is. If I put this to let's say sleep zero, it should go back to the original size of the payload that is somewhere around 100 and something kilobytes, which you can see is 96 over here. So both the time it is backed by the original DLL. And if I put this to let's say sleep 10 again, we can see it is restored back with the whole data. And if you try to scan it again, you won't be able to find anything. Perfect. So now let's see why this happens. So I have my WinDBG, which I will attach to my LL uh, EX DLL. I'll check the PB over here. So you can see we have our LDR in memory order module list. So I'll type exclamation list uh, hyphen X information table entry minus 0x 10 for the offset I clear this so we are simply dumping all the DLL information that is currently present in the process environment block I'll do a control a control C I'll go here paste it out so now currently I'm just trying to find uh, information about these two DLLs from our LLEX. So we're going to see why is it that this is detected as a stormed module and why the brute retail payload is not detected by a stormed module. So now I'll just do a split write so that we can take a look at the differences and I will erase whatever is not required. So we don't need, let's say NT DLL, we have uh, kernel 32, kernel base, we have MSVCRT and finally we have ADV API 32. We'll delete everything till here. And finally we'll delete any other dependencies of ADV API and simply go back to Chakra. Perfect. So let's uh, take a look at the differences between both of them. So over here on the right hand side, uh, yeah, let me, yeah, uh, this is the empty final list which I will erase, perfect. So you can see on the left hand side, we have ADV API 32 and on the right hand side, we have Chakra. 
we can see that the entry point is basically a legitimate entry point whereas in this case it is null because chakra.dll even though it was mapped it, its IIT was not parsed it's uh, it was not exactly loaded as a dll uh, we can also conclude that by scrolling down and taking a look at the flags that have been configured you can see we have image dll as set to one that is true over here it is false load notification sent is uh, one which means the notification that the dll was loaded was sent over here it's false again and a few more information we can also see that process static import was basically zero now this can be zero this can be one depending upon the type of the dll that we are trying to load which means most of the time if you have a dll which is loaded via load library x you will have the entry point as null you will have an image dll over here as loaded as exe and not a dll which means zero or basically a data file in this case and the load notification sent will basically be null over here as well and you can see the flags that is why the flags differ over here in this case the remaining portions are more or less the same so we don't have to worry about the remaining portions below so let's see how it looks like in the case of brutal the one that we have currently stopped brutal also uses load library x itself but with a lot of tweaks and hooks and changes to the process environment table so process environment block so uh, i'll go back here i'll detach i'll go file attached to a process and we have our notepad let me put this to let's say sleep 20 and let me attach it to uh, notepad itself i'll clear the screen exclamation peb i'll scroll to the very top this is our ldr information over here in this case and finally i'll just scroll and I'll first clear the screen, right? Because I don't want to copy any garbage values. I'll do a control A, control C. And this time what I'll do is I'll just open up a new tab to show you the difference. And over here I'll search for let's say chakra.dll. I'll erase everything from over here till here so that it's easier to read. And everything below that as well. So if you take a look at both of these values over here, you might see that how things are more or less different. We have a valid uh, entry point, uh, the size of the image, we have the flags, we have our image loaded as DLL, we have our load notification sent. Now make note that it is not actually sending a load notification. It is just a modified value and which means that if you are using any DLL for stomping, the load notification will not be sent but it will show that the notification for the DLL load was actually sent out. The process static import which you can enable or disable, it's up to you. Most of the time it could be any of the things. For example, if I copy and paste this over here, and if I search for let's say uh, just load notification sent, and let me just select all the load notification sent over here in this, and you can see that we have ones over here at a lot of places and not zero. Zero is only there when there is nothing to load in this case, which means in our case that we have uh, basically successfully sent our load notification in this case. Similarly, you can check for process static import as well and a few other things. And that's why since we have a valid entry point, it is not specifically loaded as a um, image file. It's pretty easy to evade most of the detections that is currently there. And especially with the new uh, execution technique of remote procedure call into remote processes, it should become a bit more easier as well over a period of time. So that would be all for this video on how Brutal evades module stomping uh, from EDRs and various other manual detection techniques. Make note that this evasion is not only available for Brutal when it is in sleep mode, but also when it is doing a sleep zero, it will still have all of these uh, configurations in place in the process environment block and it will try to avoid any and all types of detections at the same time. So there are a few more updates uh, to the v1.5 release, uh, a lot of major updates actually which should be released by the end of next week hopefully. And uh, yep, that would be all for this video and cheers guys, have a nice day ahead.